Network, Northern Light Webcasting Network, and NLWN TV in conjunction with Goldbax High School presents Viking Free Game. A look at today's Goldbacks Vikings voice game. And now, Viking Free Game. Good evening and welcome to the NLWN TV studios where tonight the Colfax Vikings are getting ready to tip off the 2020-2021 boys basketball season as they take on the Somerset Spartans. Rick Olson here and soon I'll head over to the school to join Dan Petchow as we're getting ready to bring you all the play-by-play -play action of tonight's non-conference game right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN-TV. Now coming up in this edition of Viking Pregame, we'll take a look at tonight's matchup between the Somerset Spartans and the Colfax Vikings. Then we'll get Coach Noel's perspective on tonight's game in Coach's Corner. Following that, we'll bring you all the play-by-play -play action of tonight's game. So it's time to get ready for some exciting high school boys basketball. All that coming up right after this brief timeout. You're tuned to Viking Pregame on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. This is the story of a boy who is very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help, and slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Welcome back to Viking Pregame, where Dan Petschow and I are getting ready to bring you all the action of tonight's season-opening boys basketball game between the Somerset Spartans and the Colfax Vikings. The Vikings are looking to showcase their new look under new direction. The Vikings are also looking to return to the Dun St. Croix Conference Championship. The Vikings start this season with a new look from top to bottom. Mark Knoll takes over as head coach, replacing former head coach Garrett Moss. Coach Knoll returns to Colfax from the University of Dubuque, where he was the women's head basketball coach. In addition to a new head coach, the Vikings need to find a way to replace six players who graduated from last year's squad. However, the Vikings have several players returning from last season's team who saw significant playing time. Now they're led by 6'5 senior forward Drew Gibson, who averaged nearly seven points per game coming off the bench by scoring 207 points. Joining Gibson is 6'1 senior guard Noah Heidorn, who scored 139 points, and 6'1 senior guard Hunter Reback, who was an effective defensive player while adding 47 points. Those players, along with solid depth, give the Vikings plenty of optimism for the 2020-2021 season. Somerset, having already played three games in the 2020-2021 season uh, the Spartans play in the middle border conference and thus far this season they've combi compiled a two win and one loss record with victories over Webster by a score of 64 to 36 and Stanley Boyd 57 to 47 or 55 to 47 while losing their season opener on December 1st to Altoona by a 78 to 67 score. The Spartans are led in scoring by 6'1 senior guard Melvin Medina Ortiz, who's averaging nearly 16 points per game. Medina Ortiz is followed in scoring by 6'3 senior wing Jackson Cook and 6'4 freshman Lake Dijon, who are averaging 10 points per game each. Cook is also the leading rebounder for the Spartans, averaging 8 boards per game. Now, coming up next, following this time out, we'll get the coach's perspective as we chat with Viking head coach Mark Knoll on Coach's Corner. You're tuned to Viking Pregame on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN-TV. Being prepared is a part of who you are, but it's especially important in the case of a disaster. Be informed about possible emergencies in your area. 
Make a plan that covers where you'll go in an emergency. Build a kit with the things you need to survive. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. Start your plan today. Go to ready.gov slash my plan. Time now to see what the coaches have to say. It's Coach's Corner, what they look at tonight's game from the coach's point of view. And now Coach's Corner. Today we're talking with Viking Boys head coach Mark Knoll. And coach, in just a few minutes, you're going to be tipping off the 2020-2021 basketball season. This is your first season at the helm of the Viking ship. So your feelings as we get ready to tip off this season. Well, first of all, it's a great opportunity for me to come back home and be the coach at Kovacs High School. I'm very appreciative of the, of the opportunity and appreciative of the uh, administration and the school board to give me this opportunity. Well, Coach, could you please fill us in a little bit on your background? Sure. of all years presents some real unique opportunities and situations, especially with the presence of COVID-19. Uh, what special challenges has that presented for you and the Vikings? Well, I think the biggest, the biggest challenge is the, the kids and, and obviously the coaches too, but that's not a big deal with the, the athletes themselves have to, you know, wear a mask when they play. And, you know, we, and as a coach, I like to play fast and I like to play aggressive. And we're, and we're trying not to talk about the math uh, much so it doesn't become a mental thing. But ultimately, I it, mean, it, it's something to do a challenge with, with uh, having to wear these masks. And, and you know, one thing I, I can say is that the kids have done a great job during practice, uh, not once complaining about it. Now, the Vikings did lose some pretty valuable players due to graduation from last year's team. But this year's class... We got a chance to peek at one of your practices the other day, and, and they seem ready to step up and take the challenge on. What can you tell us about this year's team? Well, I think, first of all, you know, we have seven seniors, you know, and, and that starts with them first. And then and going from there, um, you know, we're going to be teaching a new style of basketball, a new, a new system. And there's going to be, I'm sure there's going to be days where it looks great, and then there's going to be days where it's going to look like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> uh, but with that said, I, I, I really like these kids. I really like how hard they're working. I really like their effort. And hopefully you saw that in, in our practice. They were really playing hard and, and having fun. 
and uh, I think it should be a fun style of basketball for these kids to uh, to play and for people to watch. Well, tonight. The Vikings take on the Somerset Spartans. Uh, what can you tell us about the Spartans? What special challenges do they present? Well, I think the biggest thing is is that they uh, they've already had this will be their fourth game. This is our first game, and they've got four. This will be their fourth game. They're already, they are already two and one. Um, they've already beaten uh, Webster and Stanley Boyd. And then they lost only by around eight to Altoona. You know, and, and Altoona is a solid program. And, you know, um, Somerset has a good group of seniors. They have three seniors that are really good. They have two guards that are really good, really aggressive. And they have an inside player that gets to the free throw line a lot, too. So it's going to be, it should be a high scoring game. And it should be a, a fun game for people to watch because it'll, it'll be a aggressive game. Well, Coach Noel, good luck in tonight's game, and hopefully the Vikings will have a successful beginning to that 2020-2021 season. Yeah, thank you for um, letting me do this interview with you, and go Vikings. You've been listening to Coach's Corner, where they look at tonight's game from the coach's point of view. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back and change it all. If I could go back. I would. But I can't. Welcome back to Viking Pregame. The Vikings are looking to tip off the 2020-2021 season in winning style. On the other hand, the Spartans would like to continue their winning record this season and to show that they're ready to move beyond the WIAA Regional Finals where they bowed out of tournament play last season. So the stage is set for some exciting boys high school basketball. And we'll have all the action for you right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN-TV. In just a moment, I'll be heading over to the school to join my colleague Dan Petchow as we'll bring you all the action of tonight's season opening boys game between the Vikings and the Spartans. That's all coming up next. Now you've been tuned to Viking Pregame on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN-TV. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. You've been tuned to Viking Pre-Game with a look at today's Colfax Vikings boys game. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. Stay tuned. Coming up next is Light Colfax Viking Basketball. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Colfax Viking basketball is on the air. Over to Hydorn, drives down the left side, lays it up and in. And the Vikings draw first blood. The Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV proudly presents tonight's Colfax Viking Boys varsity basketball game. Underneath oh. the reback, lays it up and puts it in. Great pass by Noah Heidarner. Join us as we head out to the gym for tonight's Viking basketball. Back out high to Gibson, three-pointer on the way, off the front of the iron, rolls around and in. That hit the rim about four different places before it decided to go down and in.
And good evening and welcome to Colfax High School. Rick Olson here along with Dan Petchow. And Dan, we're kicking off the boys tonight. Yeah, here we go. Colfax versus Somerset. This ought to be a lot of fun. Now, Somerset comes into this game already having played three games. They have a 2-1 and one record with victories over Webster and Stanley Boyd and a loss to Altoona. That was their season opener um, about a week ago. It was, well, yeah, it was a week ago. It was yeah. on December 1st. And so uh, they've got a little game experience under their belt, and the Vikings looking to get some for themselves, and it's a whole new look for the Vikings this year under the tutelage of head coach Mark Noel. Uh, Dan, why don't you let us know who's going to play in tonight's game? Yeah, here's the starter for Somerset. They're going to go with number four senior, Tate Pickler. 6'2", senior, number 10, Trey Krybeck. 6'1", senior, number 11, Melvin Medina-Ortiz. 6'2", senior, number 13, Tyson Wink. And 6'3", senior, number 21, Jackson Cook. Four Colfax Vikings. They're going to go with 6'2", junior, number 4, Nathan Hayovich. 6'2", senior, number 15, Caden Erickson. 6'5", junior, number 22, Tristan Lenz. 6'1", senior, Nora Hay number 23, Nora Heidorn. And 6'5", senior, number 33, Drew Gibson. And we've got a little bit of time before we get things started tonight, so we're going to take a bit of a timeout. And you are tuned to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN-TV. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watcha. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? But now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Are your animals feeling a little under the weather? Give the nice folks at Colfax Animal Hospital a call. Bruce Buckley is just what the doctor ordered. In fact, he is the doctor and he's ready to help. That's the Colfax Animal Hospital. Give them a call at 715 <laughs> And that's Colfax senior Drew Gibson with the national anthem. And uh, Dan, we're getting ready for some basketball. We've been kind of waiting for this one. We've had a few girls games under our belts. They've been a lot of fun, but we've been waiting to get the boys started just as much. Uh, see how some of the Colfax seniors that are coming back are going to do tonight, like Hunter Reebok and Drew Gibson. And uh, like but they do have some new faces on team, so we'll see how they uh, will fit into the picture. And a whole new style of play. We got a chance to take a look at uh, 
practice a couple days ago, well, it was sometime last week, I guess, and uh, we got to see Coach Dole's system in action, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty interesting up-tempo up uh, physical basketball game. Yeah, some new ideas for Colfax, and uh, we'll see how it all gets put together tonight. And they're getting ready to do the Vikings starting lineup. And we remember, of course, last year, Nathan's brother, Ed, uh, was a big player for the Vikings. So Nathan's got some pretty big shoes to fill. Caden Erickson is going to be our Viking profile guest at halftime. And you and I were talking last week during practice that Drew Gibson, who just got introduced, was usually like the sixth guy, uh, the first guy off the bench for the Vikings last season. So now he's got to take over that leadership role as Coach Noel meets with the Vikings out on the floor, gives them last minute instructions. And uh, the Somerset Spartans are out on the floor with pitcher Krybeck, Medina Ortiz, Wink, and Cook. And pitcher is to inbound it. It looks like he's going to throw it into Crybeck. They've got four on the floor. We're waiting for number five. He ran out the door. Uh, we'll see where he... Right here he comes. And that was uh, Medina Ortiz, uh, leading scorer for Somerset Spartans so far this season. Okay, so inbounding it to Krybeck. Takes it over to the left side to Medina Ortiz. Takes it to the top of the key. Back over to Krybeck, drives towards the lane from the left side, turns and walks with it. And it'll be Viking ball. Vikings moving left to right. Gibson to inbound it, full court pressure being put on by the Spartans. Gibson has it, gets it over to Heidorn, back to Gibson. Now they get it into the forecourt. Ball gets knocked away. Medina Ortiz picks it up for Somerset. Gets it over to pitcher. Back to Medina Ortiz. Crybeck. Pitcher has it. Over to Wink. And to Crybeck. Back to Wink. To Medina Ortiz. To, pit, uh, yeah, to pitcher. He gets it over to Medina Ortiz. To Cook. Cook drives the lane, puts it up, and it goes in. Somerset draws first blood, two to nothing with 17.05 to go. Gibson with it. Feeds it to Hajdukovic, takes it across the timeline. Down into the left corner and just a little bit too high for Erickson. It goes out of bounds and Somerset has the ball. Medina Ortiz brings it down the floor. Or check that, that's, uh, yeah, that's Medina Ortiz. Does a hesitation, drives down the left side of the lane, puts it up, no good, rebound tapped around, pulled away by Krybeck. Krybeck gets it over to Cook. Cook on the right side of the lane, puts it up, no good, rebound taken away by Gibson. Gibson gets it over to Heidorn. Heidorn across the timeline. He gets it over to Erickson. Erickson takes it out between the circles. Back over to Heidorn on the left. We have a whistle and a foul. And it's a charge being called on Caden Erickson. No, check that. It's on Noah Heidorn. It's Heidorn's first personal, first team foul. First foul on anybody. Medina Ortiz gets it over. Right back, but the ball gets knocked away and the Vikings have it. Heidorn with it. Leads it over to Erickson. Erickson drives the lane, kicks it out from the right corner by Gibson. No good. Rebound taken down by Hajdukovic. Then he tips it over to Caden Erickson, who puts it up and in and ties the game up at two. Somerset across the timeline. 
Wink with it, feeds it into the lane to Pitcher. Pitcher puts a shot up and it's good. Inbound pass was intended for Heidorn, but reaching across and knocking it out of bounds is Somerset, and it'll be Viking ball after this timeout. 15.25 to go, and you're tuned to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN-TV. Emergency plan today. We're back here at Colfax High School. Rick Olson along with Dan Petschow. Vikings have the ball. Trailing 4-2 to two with 15-22 to go. Hajdukovic, and then they finally feed it over to Lenz. Now back out high to Gibson. He gets it off to Heidorn. Heidorn drives down the left side of the lane, and we have a foul being called. Looks like it's going to be on pitcher, or check that. I don't know what the sign was, but it wasn't a foul on the Vikings, but it was a turnover of some type. So pitcher from the corner puts it up no good. Rebound tapped around, picked up by Somerset. That's uh, Medina Ortiz. He put it in, so inbound pass gets knocked out of bounds by the Vikings, and so Somerset has the ball. Looking to get it in, they finally get it in to Cook. Cook gets it over to Medina Ortiz, over to Pitcher. Pitcher's on the right side. Drives towards the lane, feeds it down low. Right side of the lane, they kick it out to Wink. Who puts it up, no good. Rebound tapped up, no good. Rebound followed up by Medina Ortiz, and it's good. Eight to two, Somerset on top. Vikings quickly down the floor. Heidorn has it over in the left corner. Turns around, and they called him for a walk. He did a little turnaround move, and they got him for a walk, and that's gonna bring Hutter Ree back into the game. Kofax is gonna have to start boxing all underneath, keeping Ortiz out of there. He's gonna, he's gonna make a living out tonight. That's part of the reason he's the leading scorer for Somerset. They feed it down underneath. That time it was to Cook, put it up no good. Gibson with the rebound. They get it over to Heidorn. Gets it down and now they kick it out to Gibson, puts up a three and he hit it. Drew Gibson with the three. Eight to five, Vikings trailing by three. 13.54 to go. Pass is just out of the reach of Gebheim. And now they get it down underneath, puts the shot up, it's gonna count. Jason Cook with the shot and he draws the harm as well. And the foul is on Reback. His first personal, second team foul on the Vikings. Jackson Cook at the line. Shots on the way, and no good off the back of the iron. Ball scrambled for on the floor, taken away by Gibson. He feeds it over to Hoffman. Brings it across the timeline. Gets it over to Heidorn. High wide and right. Now dribbles it between the circles. Getting it back around to the right side. This is Heidorn, and they get him with a five second close guarding call. Colfax look a little confused on that play. So Somerset brings it in. Gebheim with it. Feed it around the top of the key and over to Wink. Wink gets it down in the corner to Gebheim. Gebheim drives the baseline, puts it up, no good. Rebound taken down by the Vikings. 
And Heidorn takes it down the floor, gets it to Reback, puts a jump stop at the baseline. Get, they get it back out to Gibson at the top of the key, drives down the left side of the lane, no good. Rebound taken down by Somerset. Quickly down the floor, this is Cook. He tries to put it up and they're gonna get him with the offensive foul. Or I guess technically that's called a player control foul. But that'll be his first personal. Yeah, good job by Tanner Hoffman to get position, get the block for the uh, before Jackson Cook got there. First team foul against Somerset. Gibson inbound the ball. Gets it to Heidorn, back to Gibson. Back to Heidorn, still in the backcourt, to Gibson. Gets it down deep this time. To Albright, now back out to Gibson. Long three on the way, off the front of the iron, no good. Gibson chases his own rebound. Drives down the right side of the lane, lays it up and in. Drew Gibson with an awful lot of hustle that time. Put up the long three from the left side, it didn't go. Chased it around to the right side, took it down the right side of the lane, laid it in. And it gets answered by a three-pointer from Krybeck for Somerset. 13 to seven, the Spartans are on top of the Vikings. Heidorn with it to Gibson. Back to Heidorn, takes it across the timeline. Cross court pass to Gibson. Now over to Albright. To Reebok, to Albright from the right corner and he put the three in. Vikings cut that lead to three. Here comes Somerset down the floor. Ryback with it, feeds it into the lane to Dendinger, and he put it up and in. Dendinger with the shot. Albright has it, gets it to Gibson, back to Albright. 15 to 10, Somerset on top. Albright with it through the center circle, and a 10 second violation against the Vikings. Lost track of time that time. Yeah, you got to keep your head up and look down the court. There was a guy open in the corner down there. Just missed him. So Somerset getting ready to inbound it. Krybeck brings it across the timeline. Gets it over to the right side to Gebheim. Now over to the left, a three-pointer from the left side by Krybeck is no good. Gebheim chases down the rebound. They feed it over to Cook. Now over to Pitcher, back to Cook. Down to Gebheim, back out to Cook. Gebheim to Cook. The pitcher drives the lane, doesn't get anywhere. Passes it back out to Cook, and he drives down the lane and puts it up and in. Jackson Cook, he's got six points on the night, 17 to 10. Somerset with the lead. Hydorn gets it over to Reback. Feeds it off, three-pointer on the way, no good. That was by Hoffman, and quickly back down the floor. Comes Somerset, Krybeck feeds it to Cook. He's in the lane, looking for somewhere to go. Finally gets it out to Geb uh, Gebheim, and Gebheim put up the three and hit it. 20 to 10, 10 point lead now for Somerset. Vikings had it down to three just a moment ago. Quickly down the floor, here come the Vikings, and it's Heidorn with a little shot from underneath, and it doesn't go. Quickly down the floor comes Somerset. Krybeck with a three off the front of the iron, no good, rebound. Taken down by Hoffman for the Vikings. Heidorn with it, drives down the right side of the lane, lays it up, no good, whistle and a foul. Good job by Noah Heidorn to get in there and draw the foul. And that foul is on Jackson Cook. It's his second personal, second team foul. And Heidorn is at the line for the Vikings. First shot is good. Rolled around the rim a couple times before going all the way through. Mitch Riesdorf into the lineup for the Vikings. Giving Gibson a bit of a break. Heidorn's second shot is up, rolls around and in. 
20 to 12. Spartans are on top. Pitcher with it. Feeds it over to Medina Ortiz, and then they get it over to Gebheim, who puts up the three and hit it. Vikings bringing it down the floor. Hoffman loses control. And Medina Ortiz takes it in for the layup, draws the harm, and he's going to the line for the and one. 25 to 12, 9 11 to go. And we have a timeout on the floor. 9 11 left in the first half, 25 for Somerset, 12 for the Vikings, and you're tuned to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. As you check names off your gift-giving list, Dairy State Bank encourages you to shop local as much as possible. The reasons are countless. For example, local businesses create two out of every three new jobs in the U.S. each year. There are times you could save a few cents by ordering online, but when you shop at a local store, you could be saving your community. Shop local for the holidays. It's more important than ever. Dairy State Bank. Banking on relationships. Member FDIC. Back at Colfax High School, Somerset at the line. This is Medina Ortiz to shoot the and one. His shot is on the way and it's good. 26 to 12, 14 point lead for Somerset. Heidorn brings it down the floor, gets it to Reebok. Reebok drives the right baseline, puts it up and he put it home. Hunter Reback with the field goal for the Vikings from the baseline. And quickly down the floor comes Somerset. They get it over to Pitcher, to Siggins. Back to Pitcher, drives down the right side of the lane, lays it up, no good. Rebound being batted around, taken away by the Vikings. Heidorn with it, gets it over to Reback, back to Heidorn. Heidorn through the center circle. It's the right side. Now over to Reebok, takes it across the free throw line, and he skidded to a stop and got called for the travel. Not much you can do about that, Dan. His foot just kind of slid on the floor. Yeah, I heard the squeak. Yeah. <laughs> and here comes Somerset back down the floor. This is Medina Ortiz with it. Gets it over to Siggins, puts up the three-pointer, no good. Rebound, batted out of bounds, and it's off the Vikings. So it'll be Somerset's ball. Pitcher to inbound for the Spartans. They feed it out high to Medina Ortiz, gets it over to the right side to Pitcher. Pitcher puts up the shot, no good. Rebound, batted down. And taken away by Heidorn, takes it across the timeline for the Vikings. He's at the free throw line. Kicks it over to Lenz, gets it back out to Heidorn. Heidorn drives in the lane, loses the handle on it. So scramble for it, picked up by Siggins, brings it down the floor, and he walked with it as he turned around. He thought about taking the layup, decided to pass it off, and that's what caused him to walk. Yeah, he should have just took the shot. And let's see here. Vikings trying to decide which five are supposed to be on the floor. Now they've got it figured out, I guess. Gibson back into the lineup for the Vikings. Passes into Heidorn, who takes it across the timeline. He's between the circles. Over to Gibson on the right, puts up the three. Short, rebound, taken down. And the ball gets knocked out of bounds. Yeah, a little out of Drew's range there. Should come in a couple of feet. It's going to be the Spartans' ball. Wink gets it into Medina Ortiz. Now they get it over to Crybeck. Back over to Medina Ortiz from the left side. Drives the baseline. Reverse layup, no good. Rebound taken down by the Vikings. Heidorn across the timeline. Now he's at the free throw line. The ball gets knocked away, but we got a foul being called on the Spartans. Yeah. <laughs> 
And the foul is on pitcher. It's his first personal third team foul on the Spartans. 7.14 to go in the first half. Ryan Albright into the lineup for the Vikings. He gets it into Erickson. Erickson with a shot, no good. Rebound taken down by the Spartans. This pitcher with it across the timeline over to the right side. Gets it over to Crybeck between the circles. Quickly over to the left side, Medina Ortiz from three. Rebound taken down by the Vikings. Erickson with it, takes it across the timeline. He feeds it over to Albright, takes it around the right side, gives it off to Hoffman. Hoffman feeds underneath, the shot goes up and in by Nathan Hajdukovic. Yeah, good cut there by Nathan Hajdukovic on that one. 26-16, Vikings down by 10. Pitcher with it, he gets it over to Moe. They feed that over to Medina Ortiz and back over to the right side to Krybeck, drives the right baseline. It gets all tied up down there. And Hoffman steals the ball and comes away with it, takes it across the timeline. Feeds it over on the left side to Gibson. Gibson out high to Albright. Now they get it down to the corner to Gibson. Then to Hoffman, Hoffman with a three, no good off the back of the iron. Hoffman crashes the boards, comes down with it and gets it passed off. And we have a travel call being called against the Vikings. I think they finally called the third travel because when Hoffman got the ball, he slid about half a foot. Right. So finally, Somerset has the ball. And bringing it down the floor is Medina Ortiz. Over to Krybeck. Over to Gebheim to Mull. Mull puts up the shot, no good. Rebound taken down by the Vikings. Hoffman with it, or check that, that's Albright. Gets it over to Hajdukovic. The shot is no good. He put up a three, but it was no good. And Mardino Ortiz comes driving down and we've got a charging call being called against Medina Ortiz. Good job by Drew Gibson to get position there. And just plant his feet and take the hit. He got kind of used to that playing quarterback with as many hits <laughs> yeah, as he right. took. <laughs> All right, Vikings inbound the ball. Gibson has it. Hajdukovic to Gibson. Quickly into the forecourt. Now to Erickson. Back over to Gibson between the circles. Gibson feeds it over to Hoffman. Back to Hajdukovic, to Albright. Back out to Erickson, Erickson with a three, no good. Rebound, taken down by Hoffman, he lays it up and in. Nice second chance there for Tanner Hoffman. Tanner Hoffman playing big tonight. 26 to 18, Vikings trail by eight. Pass over to Mull to the right side, drives down the right baseline, loses the handle, gets it back. Cross court pass. Over to Gebheim. Gebheim now out at the top of the key. Gets it to Mull. Over to Medina Ortiz on the left. And we have a hold being called against Tanner Hoffman. That's the second foul on Hoffman and the fourth team foul on the Vikings. Inbound shot goes up, no good. That was a shot by Gebheim, and the Vikings have it. Heidorn over to Hajdukovic to Gibson, going down the left side. Kicks it back out high to Hoffman from three, no good. Rebound tipped out, Hajdukovic with a shot. It's no good. Rebound taken down by Somerset. Quickly down the floor, Medina Ortiz puts it up and we've got a whistle and a foul. Shot was no good. And the foul is on Noah Heidorn and that's his second personal. 15 foul on the Vikings. And Medina Ortiz at the line. His first shot's on the way, it's no good. Ah! 
26 to 18. Somerset on top, 4.03 to go in the first half. Medina Ortiz taking his second shot. It's on the way, off the front of the iron and taken down by Hoffman. Feeds it over to Heidorn, Heidorn across the timeline. Takes it around the right side. Gets it out to the top of the key to Erickson. Erickson's shot is no good. Rebound tipped around and Somerset comes away with it. Gebheim with it into the lane. Feeds it out high to Cook. Cook looks into the lane to Dendinger. And he puts the shot in. Gibson looking for someone to throw it into. Gets it to Heidorn. Feeds it over to Reback across the timeline. Tries to get it to Hydorn, but the ball's intercepted and down the floor goes Wink and its layup is no good. And we have a whistle and a foul as the Vikings are trying to get it up the floor. Ball got stolen away from Reebok and he reached back in to try to get it back and the foul's gonna be on Reebok. That's Hunter's first personal. Second personal, sixth team foul on the Vikings. Cook with it on the left side for Somerset. And we have a whistle and a foul. Evidently we have a bit of a grab by Erickson as Cook went by and so Cook's gonna go to the line for the one and one. Into the lineup comes Ryan Albright for the Vikings, replacing Hunter Reback. Jackson Cook at the line. Free throw shot on the way, and it's good. So now his bonus shot, 29 to 18. Shot is on the way, it's also good. 30 to 18, Somerset with the lead. Gibson to inbound. Gets it to Heidorn, back to Gibson. Over to Heidorn, to Gibson. Quickly down the floor to Erickson. Erickson tries a cross court pass and it got taken out of bounds by Somerset. Pass got intercepted. It was intended for Albright. I think he tried to throw it through a little bit too much traffic that time, Dan. Yep, trying to make one too many passes. All right, Heidorn to inbound it for the Vikings. Gets it to Albright. Albright takes it out high, wide, and left. Cross court pass over to Heidorn. Now to Hoffman, down on the right side. Tries to drive into the lane, and he got fouled on his way in. And that foul will be on Dendinger. It'll be his first personal. And it's the fifth team foul against Somerset. 2.40 to go in half number one. Inbound pass comes to Gibson. Out high, wide, and right. To Heidorn. Takes it down the left side. Ball gets knocked away by Krybeck. Takes it down the floor. Tries to put it up, no good. Rebound taken down by Erickson. Long pass comes out to Hoffman. Got tipped by Somerset, but Hoffman got it back. Passes it over to Albright. Now a three-pointer from Heidorn. Gibson with the rebound, gets it to Hoffman. Shot goes up, it's no good. Ball finally gets taken down and a timeout being called by Somerset. So a timeout on the floor, it's Somerset 30, Vikings 18. You're tuned to Viking Basketball. Okay, Dad, one, two, three. Ah! Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. 
Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. And we're back here at Colfax High School. Yeah, Colfax has to uh, just kind of settle down, get into their game plan. It is the first game. They look a little, little lost. You can see the difference between a team that's already went on their fourth game with the team that's just starting. So Colfax will have to get it figured out here. All right, across the timeline comes Medina Ortiz. He's high, wide, and left for Somerset. He's out there not, not wanting to push the clock any. He gets it over to Crybeck. Now on the right side, back out over to Pitcher. They're willing to kill some clock. Back to Crybeck. He's on the left side. Vikings come out and pick him up. Pass to Medina Ortiz, and they're going to call it over and back. Evidently, Hydorn did not touch the ball. And it went back across the timeline, so the Vikings get the ball. A minute 36 to go in the first half. Albright with it, gets it inbounds to Hydorn. Hydorn at the top of the key. Feeds it to Gibson between the circles. Over onto the left side now to Albright, to Erickson. Erickson drives down the left side and it went off Erickson's foot out of bounds. So it goes over to the Somerset Spartans. Krybeck inbounds it to Medina Ortiz. Melvin Medina Ortiz comes across the timeline. Takes it to the top of the key. Now down the left side of the lane. Puts it up and lays it off the glass and in. 32 to 18. Somerset on top. Hydorn with it. Leads it over to the right side. Cross court pass is intercepted by Medina Ortiz. Lays it up, no good. Rebound tipped around. Who's going to come away with it? It goes out of bounds. And it's a Viking ball. I think they said it went off one of the Somerset feet. and went out of bounds, so the Vikings get it. Hydorn takes it across the timeline. Under a minute. Over to Gibson, drives to the right side of the lane, feeds it down underneath, shot by Lenz, goes up, it is no good. And coming away with it is Crybeck, over to Medina Ortiz. About 30 seconds to go in the half. Back over to Crybeck, to Medina Ortiz, they're just playing catch back near the timeline. Medina Ortiz feeds it out to Pitcher. Pitcher back. to Crybeck. See if they can ISO somebody. Back to Medina Ortiz. He takes it Push over to on. the left side. Leads it out to Crybeck. Crybeck with a three pointer on the way. Off the iron, no good. Rebound taken down by Pitcher. And his follow up is no good. We have halftime. So at the end of the first half, the score Somerset Spartans 32, Vikings 18. Coming up is Viking Halftime with the Viking Profile and the Colfax High School Report. And that's coming up right after this timeout. You're tuned to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. Anderson Bridges, located in Colfax, Wisconsin, has been manufacturing prefabricated steel truss bridges since 1989. With hundreds of bridges supplied nationwide, we suspect you've crossed our path. It may have been on a pedestrian or bicycle bridge, or how about a snowmobile, ATV, or golf course bridge? Anderson Bridges is likely to have manufactured it. Founded in 1989, Anderson Bridges has been a family-owned company since its beginning and are proud to support the Colfax Vikings. Time now for Viking Halftime with this week's edition of Viking Profile and the Colfax High School Report. That's all coming up following this brief timeout. So, I just moved in with his family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. 
That's disgusting. Oh, I'll poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Time now for Viking Profile, where we take a closer look at one of the Colfax Viking players. And now, Viking Profile. Today on Viking Profile, we're talking with Caden Erickson, and Caden is a senior at Colfax High School, and we're going to get to know Caden a little better right after this timeout. If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. We're talking with Caden Erickson on Viking Profile. And Caden, we know that you play basketball, but uh, what are some other things that you're involved with here at school? Um, I play quite a Baseball, I, was, I am in the, the bands and the choirs that assemble here. Okay, now when did you start playing basketball and what kind of experience have you had? Uh, I started playing back in fourth grade whenever we started doing our school ball mints and stuff like that. And then I didn't play in middle school at all. And then I just started back up my freshman year. So. Okay, and then you've learned to really like it. Yeah, no, I really enjoy it. Yeah, I wish I to middle school but so when you're not playing basketball or you're not here at school what are some other things that uh keep you interested or occupied i work quite a bit at uh, pleasant valley tree farm elk mound over there so that keeps me busy you know keeps me out of trouble so lots of fresh air hey, yeah yes. <laughs> okay and hey, this is a pretty busy time of year too yeah it is all right here i've got a few rapid fire questions for you uh, pie, ice cream, cake, or cookies? Pie. Which kind? Chocolate silk. Ooh, ooh, those are really <laughs> good. All right, your favorite color and why? Uh, blue. Uh, I'd have to say just because, I don't know. I just Because that's what I'm wearing, right? Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, there we course. go. That's no, a good reason. Beautiful color, yeah. Now, if you could have a superpower, what would it be and why? Um, be night vision, I think. And I can be at all times and I don't have to worry about, you know, if it's light or dark. So okay. now do you have a favorite NBA or WNBA team? Uh, the Bucks for sure. Okay. How about a favorite collegiate team? Um, I'm a big uh, Texas tech guy, I think. Okay. So I watch quite a bit of those. We're talking with Caden Erickson here on Viking Profile. And Caden, what are your plans for after high school? And on pursuing a degree of biology. Uh, I do not know where yet, but somewhere, you know, that'll be a good college exposure and good experience. So. Okay. How about a shout out to your family? Hi, mom and dad. How's it going? <laughs> now, when people watch Viking games here on NLWN TV, what number do you wear and what position do you play? Uh, I wear number 15 and I'm a shooting guard slash point guard. Okay, we want to thank Caden Erickson for joining us today on Viking Profile. Coming up next, more Viking Halftime. You've been listening to Viking Profile. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Time now for the Colfax High School Report with an update about what's happening at Colfax High School. 
Next, Vikings Athletics continues with the boys and girls basketball teams underway. The girls basketball team went one and two last week with losses to Mondovi by a score of 60 to 50 and to Prairie Farm 53 to 33. And then a 74 to 49 win over Elmwood Plum City. The Viking boys were scheduled to host the Boomer Blackhawks on Saturday, December 5th. However, that game was canceled due to COVID-19. Coming up this week, the Viking boys host Somerset Spartans on Tuesday, December 8th, and travel to Glenwood City to take on the Hilltoppers on Thursday, December 10th. Viking girls will also make the trip to Glenwood City to take on the Hilltoppers on Friday, December 11th. We will have that girls game on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWMTV with Viking pregame at 6.55 and live play-by-play beginning at 7 o'clock. Also this week, the ACT test will be held on Saturday, 12. Coming up next week, the Viking girls will travel to Eau Claire to take on the Regis Ramblers on Monday, the 14th, and then will host the Duran Panthers on Friday, the 18th. We will carry both of those teams on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. Also, the boys will host the Mondovi Buffaloes on Tuesday, the 17th, and travel to Turtle Lake to take on the Turtle Lake Lakers on Saturday, the 19th. We will also have both of those games on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. The high school holiday concert will be on Monday, December 14th, beginning at 7 p.m. And the elementary holiday programs will be on Tuesday the 15th. Junior kindergarten will be at 9 a.m. and then at 12.30 p.m. With grades 1 through 4 at 1.30 p.m. and grades 5 through 8 at 7 p.m. That's what's happening for the week of December 6th through December 12th at Colfax High School. You've been tuned to the Colfax High School Report with an update about what's happening at Colfax High School. Stay tuned. Coming up next is more Viking Halftime and then Second Half Action. to Viking Halftime. Stay tuned. Coming up is second half action of today's Viking game on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. And Rick Olson along with Dan Petchow back here at Colfax High School getting ready to start the second half. Dan, what do you have for scoring there in the first half? Yeah, here's the scores for Somerset right now. Their leading scorer is number 11, Melvin Ortiz with nine. Number 21, Jackson Cook has eight. Parker Gebheim, number 31, he has six. Henry Den Dengener. Dendinger. Dengener. Dendinger, he, yes. <laughs> has four. Trey Krybeck has three. And Tate Pitcher has two for the Colfax Vikings. Their leading score right now is number 33, Drew Gibson. He has five. We have number 20, Ryan Albrecht with three. And we got Nate Hajdukovic, Caden Erickson, and Tanner Hoffman, and Harvey Bach with two. Now Hydorn has two also. So those are the scores right now for Colfax. So we got 32 to 18. Just getting ready to start the second half. Okay, and it's going to be Viking ball to start the second half. Inbounding it will be Nate Hajdukovic. Going to pass it into Heidorn. Once he gets the ball, clock is set to 18 minutes and the ball gets inbounded to Heidorn. Takes it between the circles. Now over to the right side, over to Gibson on the left. Gibson with a three pointer off the glass, no good. Rebound taken down by Somerset. That's Krybeck with it, stops at the top of the key, puts up a three, and it's in. He nice. must have called the bank and got himself alone because it okay. went off the glass and through the hole. Heidorn with it to Gibson. Somerset still trying to trap. And back to Heidorn. 
across the timeline, puts the shot up, and we have an offensive foul, a charge being called against Heidorn. The shot went through, but uh, not when you run the guy over first. So down the floor comes Somerset. Medina Ortiz with it. Over to pitcher. They get it out high to Wink. Over to Medina Ortiz to pitcher on the right side. Back to Medina Ortiz down in the right corner. Leads it to Cook on the right side of the lane. Turnaround jumper in the lane, no good. Rebound taken down by Gibson for the Vikings to Hydorn across the timeline. Stops at the top of the key, gives it to Gibson. Over to the right side. Driving toward the lane is Erickson. It's up no good. Rebound taken down by Somerset. Vikings need to start making some of those shots. Down the lane goes Cook and he lays it up and in. Heidorn gets it up across the timeline to Erickson and he gets called for carrying the ball. Or turning the ball over. And we have a timeout on the floor. So with 16.38 to go in the game, it's Somerset 37, Vikings 18, and you're tuned to Viking basketball. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry, I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm gonna call my dad. You're tuned to the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN-TV. We use advertising revenue to make this service available to you. If you have a business and would like to get your message out to our ever-increasing audience, give us a call at 715-563-1749. We'll be happy to discuss our budget-friendly advertising packages with you. Get your business noticed on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN-TV by calling 715-563-1749. And we're back here at Colfax High School. Somerset brings the ball in. Across the timeline goes Medina Ortiz. Leads it out to Cryback at the top of the key, tries a three-pointer, and it comes up a little bit short, out of bounds, and the Vikings have it. Gibson inbounds it to Heidorn. Heidorn with a dribble and a stop, back to Gibson, back to Heidorn, still in the backcourt, over to Gibson. Long pass down to Erickson from the left side, three-pointer on the way, and he hit it. Caden Erickson with a three-pointer. 37-21, Vikings trying to close the gap. Medina Ortiz leads it over to Wink. Over to Cook, Cook drives into the lane. Kicks it out to Wink, over to Medina Ortiz. To Pitcher, to Cryback, to Cook. Drives into the lane, turns around, can't get it up, and we have a foul down on the floor, evidently. Yes, the foul is going to be called on Tanner Hoffman of the Vikings. That's Hoffman's third personal, second team foul on the Vikings. Somerset inbounds the ball, pitcher, out to Wink, over to Medina Ortiz, back out high to Krybeck. Over to Wink on the right side. And we have a foul being called on Hoffman. That's gonna be his fourth. Gets called with a hold. That's the third team foul on the Vikings, but Tanner Hoffman's going to need to take a seat for a little while. Gets himself into a little bit of foul trouble. Somerset inbounds the ball to Medina Ortiz over to Cryback down in the right corner. Drives the baseline. Feeds it out to Pitcher who drives in, puts it up and in. Vikings bring it down. Gibson has it. In the backcourt, looking for somewhere to go. Long pass down to Erickson. Puts up a three, and he hit it. Nothing but net. Caden Erickson has learned how to break that press. He gets open on the left side, and they hit him, and he hits a three. 39-24, Vikings trailing. Medina Ortiz takes it to the free throw line. Over to the right side to Pitcher. Pitcher drives into the lane, puts it up. No good, he overlaid it. 
And the Vikings come down with a rebound. Quickly down the floor comes Heidorn. He dragged his foot before he got the shot off. Looked like a little bit of hesitation. Not sure if he wanted to shoot it by the time he did the foot drag. So I'm not for sure of the rule on that high school. That was zero step. Oh, which, okay. Well, which, so. last time I looked, Colfax, Wisconsin is not in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Down the floor comes Somerset. And Cook puts the shot up and in. 41 to 34. That's 12 points for Cook on the night. Long pass from Heidorn, and it gets intercepted by Cook. He drives down, puts it up, and he's going to get the basket. Drew the harm on Gibson. And Cook is going to go to the line for the and one. That's the first person on Gibson tonight. Fourth team foul. Cook shot is on the way and it's good. 44-24, 20 point lead now for Somerset. Vikings have it. Coming, still in the backcourt. Across the timeline, at the free throw line and now kicks it out to Heidorn. Heidorn's shot is no good. Chases down his own rebound and he gets tied up. And we have a foul being called on Gebheim for Somerset. That's his first personal, first team foul on Somerset this half. Erickson to inbound it. Gets it to Heidorn on the left. Turnaround jumper, puts it up off the iron, no good. Gets his own rebound, and we have a jump ball called in the possession arrow. Check that, that's not a jump ball. They're saying that the that there was a foul on Heidorn on the rebound coming over the back. So that's Heidorn's first or fourth personal, 15 foul on the Vikings. Adina Ortiz drives it straight down the lane, puts it up and in for Somerset. Gibson has it in the backcourt, over to Heidorn, back to Gibson. Cross the timeline and then to Erickson driving down the lane, puts it off the iron, no good, rebound taken down by Somerset. Driving the baseline, putting it up and in is Medina Ortiz. And we have a timeout being called by the Vikings. 48 to 24, Somerset on top, and you are tuned to Viking Basketball. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes, sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Are your pooch's proportions putting on pounds? Or is your kitty's constitution constantly complaining? Well, stop by and see the friendly folks at the Colfax Animal Hospital. Dr. Bruce Buckley and his staff will be happy to help you get your family friend back on the road to healthy living. That's the Colfax Animal Hospital. Call them at 715-962-3380. Back here at Colfax High School, where the Vikings have their hands full right now with the Somerset Spartans, 13.37 to go in the game. Vikings trail by 24 points. Taking the ball down the lane, laying it up, and we have a whistle and a foul. Uh, Nathan Hajdukovic on the, on the drive, and he's gonna go to the line shooting two. And I think they said that foul. Number 30. Was on Mull. Mull. That's his first personal. Second team foul. And the second shot is also good. He made both of them. Hajdukovic did. 48 to 26. Somerset across the timeline. 
Cook with it. Gets it over to Mull. Then down to Cook again on the right side. Drives into the lane. Feeds it out to the left side. That's Siggins. Over to Mull. To Siggins. Gets it out to Gebheim. Now out to Cook. Cook drives down the left side of the lane, lays it up and puts it in. Jackson Cook was 17 on the night. And down the floor come the Vikings. Hajdukovic with it, gets it out to Erickson with a three-pointer on the way off the iron, no good. Rebound taken down by Somerset. They feed it over into the lane to Dendinger. Lays it up and puts it in. Be interesting to see the rebounding statistics on tonight's game. Gibson from three, no for the Vikings ball. Gets tapped back out to Gibson. He's in the lane, feeds it down to Albright. Albright puts up a shot, no good. Rebound, chases it and it's off of him out of bounds and it's going to be Somerset's ball. And we have some substitutions coming in for Somerset. Medina Ortiz back into the game, as well as Rory Hoff. And down the floor comes Melvin Medina Ortiz. They get it over to the left side to Siggins, long three, no good. Rebound chased down by the Vikings, Erickson with it. He takes it to the hole, and there's a whistle and a foul. And they're going to say the foul was on the floor, not on the shot. Yeah, it looked like a hole for uh, yeah. number 30, Sabian. Sabian, Sabian Moll. So Erickson inbounds it. Long pass out to Gibson. Gibson with a mile-long three off the front of the iron. Pulled down by Erickson, but no, he lost the handle on it. And Medina Ortiz comes down the floor, feeds it down underneath, and the shot is no good. It was intended by Hoff. And here comes Gibson, and we have a foul before he drove to the lane. And that foul is on Hoff. Vikings will have it out of bounds, right in front of their bench. Hajdukovic with it. Takes it down to the right corner, feeds it to Erickson, drives around into the lane, lays it up and in. Caden Erickson with 10 points on the night. Down the floor comes Melvin Medina Ortiz. He hands it off to Siggins. Over to Krybeck, back to Siggins from the left side, puts up a shot, no good. Rebound taken down by Dendinger. Puts the shot up, it's no good. Rebound taken away by the Vikings. Hajdukovic with it, feeds it to Albright. Albright puts up a shot, it's no good. And we have a, sh we have a foul, it's being called against Medina Ortiz and it's going to put Albright to the line for two. That's the second foul on Medina Ortiz. And his first shot is up, and it's good. Ryan Albright at the line. That's his fourth point of the night. Now for his second shot. It's on the way off the front of the iron, no good. Rebound chased down by Somerset. Krybeck with it across the timeline, stops at the top of the key, feeds it over to the right side to Hoff. Hoff down in the corner to Wink. Wink into the lane to Medina Ortiz. Gets tied up in traffic and he walked with it. Turnover goes to the Vikings. Gibson gets it to Hajdukovic. Hajdukovic with it, stops on the right side. Looking for somewhere to go, feeds it into the lane to Erickson. Erickson with a shot, it goes off the iron, no good. Rebound, kicked out of bounds by Erickson. Oh, they're saying it went off of Somerset. And so it'll be Viking ball, and we have a timeout called by the Vikings. 10.34 to go in the game. 
Somerset 52, Vikings 29. You are tuned to Viking Basketball. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. They both keep me motivated to go to school, and they see that if I do it, like they can do it too, you know? I feel that everything's possible. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Back here at Colfax High School, Rick Olson along with Dan Petschow. Vikings trailing 52 to 29, 10-34 to go in the game. Vikings have the ball. They're inbounding it under their own basket. Feed it into Lenz. Lenz in the right corner. Gets it out to Gibson. Gibson a long three on the way. No off the iron. Rebound taken down by Somerset. Medina Ortiz with it. Feeds it over to the left side. That's Hoff, or check that, that's uh, Wink with it. Back over to Medina Ortiz now on the right side. He's high, wide, and right. Feeds it to Krybeck, then down low. That's to Gazdick, and but then to Krybeck puts the shot up and in. Krybeck with the three-pointer, and trying to drive into the lane, they're gonna they're going to call a foul on Hajdukovic. I thought it was a travel before the foul, but uh, what do I know? That's the first personal on Hajdukovic. Sixth team foul on the Vikings. Medina Ortiz with it. Feeds it over to Wink. Over on the left side, out high to Krybeck. Krybeck over to Medina Ortiz. Drives the left baseline. Kicks it back out. And the shot is good, the three-pointer by Hoff. And the Vikings come back down. Albright with it, and we have a whistle and a foul. And that's gonna be on Wink, I believe. Oh, I take that back. It's a foul on Krybeck. That's Krybeck's first personal 16 foul on Somerset. So both teams will be on the bonus from this point on. Erickson looking to inbound it, gets it out high to Gibson. Gibson takes it down to the free throw line, now drives into the lane. A little bit of a power move, lays it up, no, it goes off the glass. Ball gets knocked out of bounds, and I believe it, let's see who they call it off of. Let off Somerset. Yes, it is off of Somerset. I believe it got knocked off of Gazdick. And so, Heidorn to inbound for the Vikings. They feed it out to Hoffman who puts up a shot. It's good. 15 footer for Tanner Hoffman. 58-31 Vikings trail. Medina Ortiz takes it around to the left side. Puts up a three pointer and it rolls around the rim and in. 61-31, it's a 30 point game. Down the floor comes the Vikings. Heidorn to Gibson. Now it's out to Hoffman, puts up a three, no good. Rebound, chased down, and we have a pushing foul being called on Heidorn. And I believe that's gonna be it for him. Yep, that's number five for Noah Heidorn. He, his night has done two points on the night for Noah Heidorn. Reback comes into the lineup for him. Tate Pitcher at the line for the one and one for Somerset. First shot is on the way and it's good. That's five points for Pitcher. And checking in real quickly is Tristan Lenz for Drew Gibson. Pitcher with the next shot is on the way. It's also good. 63 to 31, Somerset on top. Vikings bring it down the floor. Ball got tipped away from Albright. He got it back, then got it out to Hoffman, takes it in the lane, turnarounder is no good, and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Vikings. 
Winked inbound it to Medina Ortiz. 8.25 to go. Over to Wink. Over to Pitcher on the left side. They feed it across the lane. Now to Medina Ortiz from the right corner. No good. Rebound taken down by Wink. And his shot is no good. Rebound taken down by the Vikings. Erickson takes it into the lane. We have a whistle and a foul as Erickson broke into the lane. And that's going to be a foul on Gazdick. That should be his first personal, seventh team foul. So Caden Erickson goes to the line for the one and one. Erickson's first shot is on the way. No good. Rebound, batted around and taken down by the Somerset Spartans. Medina Ortiz with it, they get it out to pitcher. Cross court pass to Krybeck. Drives down the left side of the lane, puts it up and in. 65 to 31, Somerset on top. Vikings have it. Hoffman with it. Gets it over to Erickson on the right side. Erickson puts the shot up, no good. Goes out of bounds, it's still Viking ball. Last touch by Somerset. Hoffman looking to go with it. Gets it out to Lentz, out high. Over to Albright. On the right side. Leads it back out to Hoffman. Three pointer on the way, rattles around, no good. Rebound being fought for underneath and coming away with it is Somerset and that's Cook. Takes it down the floor, gets it over to Medina Ortiz and his cross court pass gets knocked away by the Vikings and they have it. Coming quickly back down the floor is Albright. Feeding it over to Erickson. Erickson puts the shot up and it's no good. Rebound taken down and put up and in. Ryan Albright with the rebound. And we have a timeout on the floor with 6.55 to go, 65 to 55, Somerset with the lead. You're tuned to Viking Basketball. As you check names off your gift giving list, Dairy State Bank encourages you to shop local as much as possible. The reasons are countless. For example, local businesses create two out of every three new jobs in the U.S. each year. There are times you could save a few cents by ordering online, but when you shop at a local store, you could be saving your community. Shop local for the holidays. It's more important than ever. Dairy State Bank. Banking on relationships. Member FDIC. If you love me enough to tolerate my perfect little pets and all their glorious dander, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. And we're back here on at Colfax. I think I gave the wrong score as we went into that commercial break. It's not 65 to 55. And it's not even 65 anymore. It's 67 to 33. Uh, Somerset with the lead over the Vikings. Albright with it, tries to get it over to Erickson, and they just don't connect, goes out of bounds. Somerset has the ball, 6.38 to go. Down the floor comes Medina Ortiz. Takes it over to the left side, now back to the right side. Down into the lane to Cook, turn around jumper, no good. Rebound taken down by Lenz. Down the floor comes Hoffman. Hoffman feeds it over to Albright. Albright takes it down the lane, tries to get it over to Erickson, and it got knocked out of bounds by Somerset. A couple more players into the Somerset lineup. Dendinger in, Gebheim comes in. And we have Max Knutson coming in for the Vikings. Oh, 
Knutson gets it over to Albright. Takes it around by the free throw line. Gets it over to Hoffman. Hoffman drives and we have a blocking foul being called. Hoffman's gonna go to the line for a couple. Blocking foul being called on Jackson Cook. That'll be his third personal, the eighth team foul on Somerset. Hoffman's shot is no good. Mull into the lineup now for Somerset. Second shot, no good. Rebound, out of bounds, and it'll be Viking ball, and getting up off the floor kind of slowly is Cook. I don't think he's hurt. I think he's just tired. He's worked really hard tonight. Oh, we have a foul being called instead of an out of bounds. Foul was called on Tristan Lenz. It's his first personal, eighth team foul. So Cook goes to the line for the one and one Gibson comes into the lineup for the Vikings, replacing Hunter Rubach. Cook's shot is on the way and it's good. Nothing but net that time. 68 to 33, and now he'll get the bonus shot. Shot is on the way, no good. Chased down by Lenz for the Vikings. Hands it off to Hoffman who brings it across the timeline. Hoffman on the right side. Leads it over to Knutson, out to Gibson at the top of the key. Gets it over to Albright. Albright to Hoffman. Hoffman, long three pointers off the back of the air, no good, taken out by Lenz. Gibson from just about the same spot, no, doesn't hit it. And here comes Somerset quickly down the floor with a long pass, and it was to Krybeck, but he took a step with it before he ran into Gibson. Um, good job by Drew Gibson, senior Colfax, to get back and play defense, get the turnover. So Gibson to inbound it to Albright. Albright across the timeline. Feeds it off to... Hoffman, back to Albright, on the left side, down by the left baseline, gets to Hoffman, drives into the lane. We have a whistle and a foul as he was heading into the lane. That foul is going to be on Parker Gebheim for Somerset, and it'll put Hoffman to the lane for the one and one. Hoffman's shot is on the way, and that's also nothing but net. So here's the second shot. It's on the way, rolls around and in. 68 to 35, Vikings trailing. Down the floor comes Mull. Leads it over on the right side to Gebheim. They take it down underneath, lay it up and in by Dendinger. And quickly back down the floor come the Vikings, 70 to 35. Somerset on top. Gibson has it, feeds it over to Hoffman. They feed it down underneath, ball gets knocked away and out of bounds. Ball went off Dendinger, so it'll be Viking ball underneath. 4.59 to go. Albright with it. He feeds it into Knutson, to Hoffman. Turnaround jumper by Riesdorf, and it's no good. Rebound taken down by Somerset. Coming down the baseline, laying it up and in is, that was Rory Hoff that made that shot. Albright with it, gets it to Hoffman. Hoffman drives into the lane, lays it up, and it goes in. Tanner Hoffman with another two points. That's eight points for him on the night. Hoff with it for Somerset down in the right corner. They feed it high and out and around. 
It gets over to Siggins. Now down from the right corner, three-pointer on the way that time by Mull, it's no good. Rebound taken away by Somerset. And Siggins with a three-pointer from the right corner, it's no good. Gibson chases down the rebound for the Vikings. Gibson showing a little bit of ball handling. They get it over onto the left side. Gibson with a three, and he hit that one. That time Gibson found the bottom of the net. 70 to, or 72 to 40, and we have a timeout on the floor. Fourth, or 3.43 to go in this one, and you are tuned to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. Wow. But now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Back here at Colfax High School. Somerset with the ball. 72 to 40 is their lead. About three and a half to go in this game. Into the lane, turnaround jumper is no good. Rebound gets tipped around and chased down by Somerset. Siggins with it and took an extra step so it'll be Viking ball. Gibson inbounds it to Albright. Albright between the circles. Takes it down the left side of the lane. Jump stops there. Feeds it over to Reesdorf from the left baseline. Turnaround jumper is no good. Rebound taken down by Somerset. Off with it. Feeds it over to Siggins. Got it to Weskel. I'd be so tempted to do my Elmer Fudd routine, but I won't do it. They work the ball around to Mull. Then to Siggins, then to Hoff, then to Mull. He's at the top of the key, takes down the right side of the lane, down underneath, laying it up and in is Jack Casey. And the shot goes up by Gibson, he puts it in. That's 10 points for Drew Gibson on the night. And Somerset has it. They get it over to Waskell. Over to Hoff. Back to Siggins. Drives down the lane. And a hook shot layup goes up. And it's good. Anything they throw toward the basket seems to be going through now. 76 to 42. Driving down the lane for the Vikings is Albright. And it doesn't go. Wasco with it. Pulls up, jumper, no good, gets his own rebound. Goes into the lane, stops, puts up the shot, no good, rebound taken down by the Vikings. Hoffman taps it in to Knutson, back to Hoffman. Quickly down the floor, intended for Riesdorf, but he threw it too high and just out of the reach of Mitch Riesdorf. Nick Jensen into the lineup for the Vikings. And Tristan Lenz. One thirty-eight to go. Off with it and gets it over to Mull as he comes across the timeline. Stops between the circles. Feeds it over to the left side to Casey. Down into the left corner and now back out to Casey. To Waskell. To Mull. Now they feed it down underneath and it goes out of bounds off of Jensen. It was saved by Gadzik, or Gazdick. He threw it inbounds off of Jensen's legs and it went and it went out and Somerset has the ball. They feed it to Casey. Then back out to Waskell. His shot is no good. Rebound taken down by the Vikings. Quickly down the floor. Erickson. Lost the handle, we have a foul on the floor. And 
And so the foul is being called on uh, Savian Mull for Somerset. That's Mull's third personal. Puts Erickson at the line. Shot is up and in. Vikings are in the double bonus, so Erickson had two shots coming anyway. That's 11 points for Caden Erickson tonight. Second shot on the way, and it's also good. Somerset brings it down the floor. Under a minute to go. Over to Waskell on the right side. Feeds it down into the corner to Huff. Back out to Waskell. Cross court to Casey. Tries to feed it into the lane and it gets knocked away by the Vikings. Knutson comes away with it. Across the timeline. Knutson takes down the right side. Feeds it out to Erickson. Goes off his leg. Jensen picks it up. Gets it over to Riesdorf. He's out high, wide and right. Over to Jensen with a three-pointer on the way off the iron. No good. He thought he made that one, but nope, it didn't go in. And down the floor comes Somerset. 13 seconds to go in the game. Casey with it on the right side. He dribbles it out high, and that's just about going to wrap it up. And it does. So the Vikings have a game in the book. Unfortunately, goes into the loss column. Final score, Somerset, 76, Vikings, 44. And we'll be back with Viking post game after this timeout. Dan will have all kinds of numbers tallied up for you. And we'll, we will hopefully get a chat with uh, Viking head coach Mark Knoll as well when we do that. So that's Viking Post came coming up right after this timeout. You've been watching Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. Roll over. Can't five. All right. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and her. I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at the shelterpetproject.org. Thank you for joining us for Colfax Viking Boys Basketball. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. Stay tuned. Coming up next is Viking Post Game where we'll take a look back at today's Viking game. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. We're not in your hand trying to text somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs>
four games into the year they're not going to make. Right, right. Yeah, no, and, and, and like you said, it's, it's their fourth game and our first game, and it's, uh, I mean, they, they've had a lot more practices as well, too, you know, so that, uh, and give them credit, too. They're, they're a really good team, you know, really good team. They'll, uh, they'll do really well, so, um, you know. Well, they've got height, speed, physicality. Yes. They, yep. They've got all the yep. things that uh, could make it a real exciting yep. year for them, mm -hmm. and that's not to take anything away from the Vikings. You had a lot of kids really scrapping out there mm -hmm. tonight. Uh, Caden Erickson, I was pretty impressed with him tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I saw some things out of Drew Gibson that I wasn't expecting to see some ball handling skills mm -hmm. out high yep. that uh, were kind of surprising. There's going to be some fun things that are going to start to happen once they get the feel for where people are going to be, when they're going to sure. be there, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, I, I think that's some of our, our strong suits this, this year is we're going to have a lot of versatile players, you know, like, uh, like Drew and, uh, and Tanner Hoffman, so hopefully they can, uh, you know, keep doing what they're doing like they did tonight and keep playing keep playing hard I, I loved our energy tonight I think that uh, that helped us a lot too considering the outcome but uh, yeah I love the well energy. and you know what if you don't play really good teams you don't get better right right and you know mm -hmm. <laughs> the Vikings are going to get a whole lot better if that's if Correct. that rule gets Correct. followed because... yeah we, we keep keep <laughs> playing teams like this you know yeah we're uh, I, I like our I like our chances on the road so and uh, and you know, even with COVID and everything, it's a long season, and, and there's plenty of time to make the good happen. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, Brett Prince, I want to thank you for coming up and joining yes, us you. today thank on you. Viking Post Game, and uh, we'll be back with more Viking Post Game right after this timeout. You're tuned to Viking Post Game on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I, that no, was. No, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Rick Olson along with Dan Petchow. We're back here at Colfax High School where the Vikings just dropped one 76 to 44 to the Somerset Spartans season opening loss. But Dan, why don't you tell us who did what in this game? Yeah, here's the scores for Somerset tonight. Their leading scorer was number 21, Jackson Cook. He had 20 points, followed by number 11, Melvin Medina-Ortiz, with 16. Trey Krybeck had 11. Tate Pitcher and Parker Gebhein had 6. We had Rory Hoff with 5. We had James Siggins with 2, and Jack Casey with to for the Colfax Vikings. Their leading score tonight was number 15, Caden Erickson, with 12 points, followed by Drew Gibson with 10, Tanner Hoffman with 8, Ryan Albrecht with 6, and Nate Hajdukovic with 4, and then Noah Haidorn and Hunter Rebeck had 2. And that all comes out to 76 to 44 in favor of the Somerset Spartans. And we've said it all night. You could really tell which team was playing their fourth game and which team was playing their first game. Yeah, Somerset went deep in their bench. They had nine players that scored points, and uh, they got to the hole quite a bit. They're a little bit taller, and um, yeah, put 76 points. Yeah. And well, I'll tell you what, we have more, a lot more basketball coming up this winter and here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN-TV. And our next broadcast will be this Friday. And this is going to be kind of an interesting one because we're going to carry the Viking girls at Glenwood City, but we're going to carry this game virtually. Uh, we're going to use Glenwood City's video feed. They have offered that to us, and we'll provide the play-by-play -play from our studios. Viking pregame will be at 6.55, and 
and live play-by-play -play will be at 710. This should be a real interesting experience for the two of us, Dan. Yeah, first for, time ever. Yeah, and uh, so doing the game virtually from a different location. Then we have another one of those coming up. Um, NLWN TV and the Northern Light Webcasting Network will also have the virtual coverage of the Viking girls when they travel to Eau Claire to take on the Regis Ramblers on Monday, December 14th. Uh, that's if Regis gets back to me on that. I'm, I'm planning on doing that, but we'll see what ends up happening. Viking pregame should begin at 7.10 on that one. That game starts a little later, and live play-by-play -play will begin at 7.25. Our next boys basketball game that's going to be carried here on NLWN-TV and the Northern Light Webcasting Network will be on Thursday, December 17th when the boys host the Mondovi Buffaloes. Viking pregame will be at 6.55. Live play-by-play -play will be at 7.10. Don't forget the holiday concerts. The high school holiday concert will be on Monday the 14th, starting at 7 p.m., and the elementary programs will be on Tuesday the 15th. The junior kindergarten, they'll be at 9 a.m., and then there's another junior kindergarten program at 12.30 p.m., grades 1 through 4 at 1.30, and grades 5 through 8 at 7.00. So that's some of the stuff coming up here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. And don't forget that coming up in March, we're going to bring you Classic Soda Racing Action. Uh, John Fellens was just talking to me about that a little earlier tonight, and he's getting pretty excited about it. He's got some new things lined up. We're going to reprise seven of the weekend races from Eagle Valley Speedway with a few added features. This will help get you ready for the 2021 racing season. Classic Soda Racing Action begins on March 17th on NLWN. TV. So 76 to 44 Vikings take it on the chin to the Somerset Spartans and let's see we'll be back on Friday when we have the game for the girls coming from Glenwood City. So for Dan Petschow this is Rick Olson. You have been listening to and tuned to Viking Post Game on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. You've been listening to Viking Post Game, a wrap-up of today's Colfax Viking Boys Game. You can catch Colfax Vikings games by tuning in to any of the Northern Light Webcasting Network outlets. This has been a production of the Northern Light Webcasting Network.